What's up guys? Today I want to cover something I see a lot of people struggle with and I'm hoping this video will kind of help you guys out. Uh, so the thing I see a lot is people having trouble setting up patches for their specific guitars or you know they have several guitars and one patch sounds good with this guitar but not this guitar. So hopefully today I'm going to be able to show you guys some tips and tricks to be able to set up patches for specific guitars. And also I'm going to go over setting up the Helix for a specific song. So having snapshots for each section of the song. So today we're going to be using the Yeetzee Guitar AC30 TV patch as the bass. I'm going to use the S version, which is for brighter single coil pickups. But we're going to be using this guitar. This is my ES345. It's got humbuckers and it's kind of a darker guitar in general. So that'll be the first part, kind of setting up the patch for this guitar. And then we're going to set it up for a specific song. So in this case, we'll do Jesus I Come by Elevation Worship. So uh, we'll go through the entire song. I'll kind of walk you through my thought process of setting up effects and snapshots, and then I'll do a playthrough. Uh, before we go any further, as with all of my videos, if you look in the description box below, you'll see timestamps for every section of the video so you can jump ahead to any portion you wanna see. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is make sure we can accurately hear the tones. We don't wanna make any changes to the patch unless we can accurately monitor the guitar signal. So there's a few different ways you could do that. I have studio monitors on either side of my desk here. They're JBL 305s, very affordable, sound great, no complaints, highly recommend them. Uh, I also have a pair of headphones. Uh, for me personally, uh, I go through the studio monitors maybe 20% of the time, and the rest I adjust through these headphones. So these are Bear Dynamic DT770s, but they're the 16 ohm model of the DT770. And uh, if you've done any research on headphones, you're kind of scratching your head right now going, wait a second, I thought the Helix needed you know, 90 ohm or more uh, for the impedance. Well, this is my recommendation. I'm not going to go too into the weeds on this, but uh, what I did is I took my Helix down to my local guitar center. I set up in their little studio section and I asked them to bring every pair of headphones they had. And I AB'd them side by side by side by side using a patch I was very familiar with out of uh, the PA I played out of most. And so I listened to every single head pair of headphones, and this was the standout for me. By far, it was the clearest, most accurate sounding to my ears, and uh, I went with them. I have no regrets. I have <laughs> adjusted pretty much every single uh, tone I've ever created through these. These are my primary way of doing that, so I would highly recommend them for that. I will say they're not the best headphones in general. They got you know a relatively short cable here. Um, they're not the most comfortable, they're a little heavy, but just for purely listening and getting accurate tones, they're, they're stellar. So my recommendation is to not listen to the internet and to actually go to a store where you can test out a bunch of different headphones. But I digress, let's move on. All right, so now that we have that figured out, let's go ahead and hear the clean tone and start working on the patch. So because this is the S version of my AC30 patch, uh, it's set up for single coil guitars or brighter guitars that are lower output. So uh, I already know it's probably going to be too much gain and probably uh, it's going to be a little dark sounding. But let's just hear how it sounds on the bridge pickup, everything on full. <laughs> so yeah, to, to me I'm hearing there's too much lows, uh, there's too much low mids going on. It doesn't really have a lot of sparkle or cut to it and uh, it seems like there's probably too much gain. Yeah, so uh, right off the bat, you know, the things I want to change are to clear up the lows a little bit, give it a little more sparkle, and make it a little cleaner to start off with, and also feels a little... Yeah, it feels a little um, squishy to me. So humbuckers compress more than single coil. So again, all of that makes sense. So the first thing I want to do is clear up the lows. So what I like to do is go over to the IR block here and raise the low cut up. It's currently set to 80 for the single coil version of my patch. We'll bring it up to 90 and we'll do the same thing over at the parametric EQ. So we'll raise the low cut up to 90 and that'll just clear some of the low lows for us. So you probably won't be able to hear a difference, um, but it'll help. So yeah, so not much of a difference, but it just trust me, it helps. So next, let's go ahead and move on 
Um, I could do a ton of adjustments in the parametric EQ, but the first thing I want to do after getting the low, you know, the low cut set is go over to the amp block and let's get the drive where we want it. This is important because as you adjust the gain of the amp, it's going to change the tonality of the amp. So if you raise the gain, you'll notice uh, for most amps that the bass will become overwhelming and you have to drop the bass to compensate. So it's good to get the gain set where you want it right away. So it just sounds like it's a little too much for me for the bass tone, especially for uh, the song we're playing. Uh, so let's just kind of... Yeah, it doesn't need to drop a whole lot, maybe four or five. So it's at 4.8 right now. See how it sounds on the neck. Yeah, I think that's good. So uh, now that we have the drive out of the way, we can focus on all the other things. So what I like to do personally for humbucker guitars is I like to cut a little bit of the low mids using the parametric EQ at the end of chain. So right now, we're actually boosting the low mids because for a single coil guitar, they're usually uh, thin sounding. So you want to boost it a little bit to give the tone a little fatness. Uh, but we want to do the opposite with this guitar. So let's go ahead and drop the gain to negative one dB. And uh, let's hear how that sounds. So I'll bring it back to where it was so you can hear it. So definitely cleans it up a good amount. So we haven't done any EQ adjustments to the amp or anything. We're just dropping those low mids. Um, what I actually like to do is for humbucker guitars, especially semi hollow bodies, I find that they have a lot of buildup in the 250 to 400 Hertz range. And I tend to raise the frequency level up to, oh, I don't know, 370 ish, somewhere in that range and drop it by about a dB. Um, I just think it kind of clears things up a little better. So this is what that sounds like. So immediately to me, it, it makes a big difference. It makes everything a lot clearer. It's a little thinner sounding, but it's not, it didn't lose a ton of fatness. It just makes it focused a little more. So now let's go over to the amp block. I think we're okay with that. We can make more adjustments as we go along as well. So uh, now after that, I want to adjust. Again, the low end is a little flubby to me. So we're going to go ahead and drop the bass down to, I don't know, we'll, we'll drop it there. So I just cleaned it up a little bit, got rid of the tubbiness. So not, these aren't massive differences I'm making, but the little bits count, especially when you're doing a lot of little changes. And then uh, the other thing I like to do, so I was mentioning before that it feels a little, it feels a little squishy to me. And so what that is, is the sag parameter. So the sag parameter, as you raise it up, the uh, amp compresses more and kind of caves in more as you play. So it kind of changes the feel, um, but also, it adds in some low end as you raise the sag parameter. So uh, if there's too much low end going on and it feels a little too squishy and compressed for you, the sag parameter is kind of the uh, control to go to that'll make a big difference. So right now we have it set relatively high for single coil guitars. Because humbuckers compress more, um, I wanna lower that. So let's go ahead and put it to its default, which is five and hear how that sounds. <laughs> That sounds a little too thin to me now. Um, so we'll kind of split the difference to like, I don't know, there. So you probably won't be able to hear it very much, but you can definitely feel it when you're playing it. So yeah, I think that's okay. So uh, now that we have the low end figured out, the kind of compressed feeling of it, let's go ahead and adjust the EQ here on the amp block. So the cut control makes a massive difference on a box style amp. Uh, it doesn't take a lot uh, to, to really make it sound totally different or fit your guitar better. So right now it's kind of in the halfway range. Uh, I know I'm gonna wanna drop it a bit. So let's just kind of try, let's try it a lot. So this is 
over uh so it was at around five and a half to so now it's about four so this is what it sounds like so to me that's it's too much uh i lost some of the girth it's a little too sharp for me so uh let's go and raise it back up to i don't know half of that I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I don't think it needs a lot of treble and presence adjustment. We'll maybe raise it just a touch. Um, we'll raise both of them just a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with that tone. I think that's a good kind of solid starting point, bass tone for us to build the preset for this song. So I think we're okay there. So the last thing we want to check for EQ are the overdrives. So we made some adjustments to the amps and also the overdrives are set in my patch in the single coil version a little differently than the humbucker version. So we'll go over to our first stage overdrive here, the King of Tone yellow, and hear how that sounds. So I'll turn it off. On. So I want it to be a little brighter, um, which it, it is, and just kind of add a little more gain. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. We can adjust it as we listen to the song and see how it fits, but I'm okay with that. Now the King of Tone Red um, is set to be a little warmer, fatter, more gain. So let's hear how that sounds. So to me, it's a little too muffled. So let's raise the tone up a little bit. Um, in the presence of just a touch. I think that's okay. Again, we can make the more adjustments as we go, but I think that's all right. Then the TS-808 is my lead overdrive. So uh, yeah, I want it to be a little louder, more gain, uh, pretty bright. So let's hear how that sounds. Uh, enough. I think it's fine. So yeah, so that's pretty much all we need to do. One thing we could do is uh, change the compressor because it's a little higher for the um, single coil version of this patch, but I actually think it sounds okay for this, uh, for the song we're going to be doing. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm using the studio compressor, so it's not super extreme, um, even on the single coil version. I don't like super compressed tones. That's just me. Okay, so now let's go ahead and listen to the song and start creating the different snapshots for each part of the song. For more Helix content, subscribe. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, drop me a comment. I'll see you guys.